Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacy and the kids with me. Hey y'all. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about the Jezebel spirit. Mm -hmm. But first, we want to give honor and praise to our Father, our Creator, for imparting knowledge, wisdom, and understanding on us here in the end times. Right. And He's doing that for all of us. Um, um, us. We're fortunate to be able to share this Bible study with you guys out there in comment land. We ask that you be prepared to actually leave a comment as we go, we're talking about this Jezebel spirit. Be prepared to leave a comment. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button already because I believe by the end of this video you're going to be in such a state of wow that you're going to forget to do all of that stuff. So go ahead and do it now. Right. Oh yeah, we're about to step it up a level here. Talking about the Jezebel spirit. Mm -hmm. We got Stacy here. We got um, the kids here. We're going to play this. We're going to try to make it a little bit entertaining. Um, already come in saying, you know, it's going to be... A, a a fight is the word I said. You know, if the look at how we fight in the end times, this is um, going to be an example of that. But we're going to do it kind of in an odd way. All right, so we're looking here at the um, agenda, so to speak. We're looking at what we're going to be talking about here. We're going to be talking about the questions first that we'll ask is, why do we call it the Jezebel spirit? All right. Then we're going to talk about how it's not really an effect on uh, women. It's more uh, the whole household. It's more of a household thing, not just uh, women or not just men. When it comes to this Jezebel spirit, it'll be the second topic. Okay. We're going to ask and answer the question, who was Jezebel? We're going to talk about uh, the Shepherd of Hermes when we get into the traits of the Jezebel spirit. All right. We're going to touch on Willie Lynch. Mm -hmm. Like I said, this is going to be another next level class here. Yeah. We're going to uh, talk about um, why or, or how I think the spirit of Jezebel is empowered. What what you know makes this what um, powers this thing, you know. Because if you can learn how it, where it gets its power from, you can learn how to take that such power away. All right. Then we're going to learn about some cures for Jezebel, for the Jezebel spirit. Okay. I see, I see your smile, your face smile lit up. What and, and what? Why is that? <laughs> well, it says cures for Jezebel. Okay. So I'm like, I just didn't feel that in on all that. Right. So what what this is talking about is actually demon warfare. Right. Yeah, we're 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 going to get into some um, um, spiritual warfare here. Actually, um, I have an idea, a potential way that we can um, start to cast out this so-called Jezebel spirit. A couple of ways, as a matter of fact. So we'll be touching on the Testament of Solomon. As a matter of fact, we're looking over here at one of the last verses from the book called the Testament of Solomon. You you remember that book? Yeah, I actually um, read it a couple of weeks ago. Oh, okay. Well, great. You want to give them kind of a uh, summary of what it's all about? Well, the book is a very small and short read. Um, and it I was able to um, actually complete it in one night. And that's saying a lot for me because... Yeah, I often stop and start again, but it talks about um, the different um, demons that Solomon summoned up, and he was able to have different conversations with each, with each of them as to what were their powers and what um, had to be done to dis enable their powers so that is mostly what the book talked about. It's just a number of demons that showed up at his summon and he got to have a conversation with them. Yeah, he was kind of like the first Ghostbusters. Right. Yeah, it's, I believe that's where they got the idea of making that movie where he was actually catching these demons and putting them in uh, storage devices in the basement of the temple. Yes. Alright, so we can get our 
free PDF copy of that uh, book over here at uh, JSTOR.org. Um, I found that by doing a search for the Testament of Solomon. There should be a uh, link in the description of this video. But the first thing that I want to mention is this verse 130 here because it is actually the most important verse in the whole book. It's the last verse. You remember that? Okay. If you will, go ahead and read that. It's the last verse in the book. I then, wretch that I am, followed her advice, and the glory of God quite departed from me, and my spirit was darkened. And I became the sport of idols and demons. Wherefore, I wrote out this testament, that you who get possession of it may pray and attend to the last things, and not to the first, so that you may find grace forever and ever. Amen. Yeah, they made a clown out of it. Made a, they, made a, they made a sport out of him. He was a great king at first, but he... he um, actually did a thing and we're going to get to that at the end of the video and in, in the actually verse 129 it says what he did um, and we're going to talk about that last um, but yeah by the time he, he this is what he said about himself you know and I bring that up because of the type of book that you know the testament of Solomon is right it's, it's kind of a um, like you said it talks a lot about demons and different stuff but, you know, Solomon, you know, basically said that that wasn't really the real point of the book. The real point of the book is to understand the error that he made so we don't make that such error. Yes. All right. So the very first question that we have here is why do we say Jezebel's spirit? Stacy, I'm going to let you talk on that first. I'm we looking at my notes. Where your own notes at? You had time to prepare? Why do we say Jezebel spirit? Well, um, I think that one of the reasons that we hear that um, it's a Jezebel spirit is because she is um, considered one of the, I guess, most evil women in Scripture. And Scripture talks about you know other women who did things to dishonor their father but she did you know things that she was considered one of the more evil women so I think a lot of times because she is considered this evil woman that now people who speak of her automatically go to her as being I guess she's like the default of of now all of the evil that we're gonna say a woman does. So you think that this Jezebel lady was such evil this lady was so bad that the rest of the world can't now stop talking about her. I think that it's like you don't have anybody else to give a name to these things that you're doing, these um, errors that you're making, these sins that you're committing, and because you don't have a name, now we're going to put you under the name of Jezebel. Because she was such a bad lady. It was like she was the embodiment of the spirit. This particular lady that we talked that this one right. lady that we talking about. We ain't talking about the spirit so much mm -hmm. as the person in the Bible who goes by the name Jezebel. You saying that this lady was a bad lady? I mean, this was this was a this was a this was a tough lady. I mean, seriously now because she's this lady now is now written in the books of Revelation. I mean, you telling me that it is possible, I ain't going to say you believe it or not, I ain't only even thought about it long enough, that it is possible that this lady was so bad that now the book of Revelation talks about her and uses her as an example for 144,000, no doubt. Something like that. Okay. The reason why it's called the Jezebel spirit, I believe, is because of what we read in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 20 
which talks about this woman Jezebel in relationship to this angel of the church of Thyatira. Okay. So, in other words, we could have called, instead of saying a person has the Jezebel spirit, one could say that that person is of the congregation of the church of Thyatira. Okay, now that's Revelations 2 and 20, right? Yeah, and they told me to chastise you for saying Revelations. And I know you do so because I started saying Revelations first. So we're going to practice saying Revelation. But like I tell people who make this comment all the time, the book of Revelation is a book of Revelations. So, you know, words are kind of interchangeable. Yeah, I actually heard somebody else um, ministry where they actually, these probably same people, went in and chastised another couple for saying the book of revelations and they said basically the same thing you said and also that i can't say we, what i want to say on hand we also ahead. have people have to also remember that we got it we grew up in phonics <laughs> we grew not only that but um i'm from south alabama and i'm from i'm from and the you're hills from of, yeah. yeah hills of west virginia and they might be from new york or europe Princeton. or or they from or uh, wherever Maine. you know yeah. and you know possibly went to school at harvard or morgan state or wherever but you know people have different ways of saying it but the, i think the father knows your spirit so. yeah like we said we fighting y'all this is this is uh um, this is uh but let me say that I will respect what they said and pronounce it better. Well try. Right. Yes. So we're in Revelations two and twenty and one and um you are saying that it's because I'm saying that the, the, the reason that we call it the, Je the Jezebel spirit is because we read about it in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 20. And you're saying that it could have very well been called the to the congregation of Ty Thyatira. Yeah, the technical name is the, the Church of Thyatira. You, like, for instance, you, you go in and you look at the other ones here. Let's, let's see if I can find that right quick. This is Clarence Larkin's uh, chart for the book of Revelation. And he has the summaries for the uh, different churches. Thyatira would, could also be the lax church. You could say that you have a lax spirit. So, but the thing is, those would be labels. So what I'm, what I'm saying is that it could have, maybe even should have been called, you know, the, the church of Thyatira instead of the Jezebel spirit. Um, just like, you know, somebody in memory of the Sardis church, you wouldn't, you say that they have a dead spirit. Philadelphia, you got this, you say they got their favorite spirit. I think that that would help because when you say, for instance, you know, you gave the one with Sardis, a dead church. Now that person who you say, okay, you are acting or behaving like the folks of Sardis. So now you can go in and you can start looking up and saying, okay, what did they do? They're a dead church, which means, I guess it means they have no movement. They're basically just inactive. They ain't doing nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so, but when you start... Well, you're going to say the backsliding church. So if I go up and say somebody, you, you're a member of it, you, you're a backslider. You have a backslid. You, you, I just I ain't never heard nobody say it, but you have a backsliding spirit. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Instead of saying that you in the church of Ephesus, see, we we go through these churches. I was in you know this um, um, uh, licentious church last time. You know that's uh, Pergamus. That's the church where you you know participate in pagan festivals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because, okay, say, say for instance, you go and tell a person that they um, have a Jezebel spirit. Okay, now, 
it all they're automatically gonna say, okay, you think I'm evil, you think I'm this, everything that you think about me is bad. Okay. But you go in and you say, okay, you have a, a spirit of um, what was fire tire, right? Mm -hmm. Now we see that because a person, uh, the whole person is not bad. We see that the church of Thyatira, that the father said they had kindness, they had love, they had patience. But you got some stuff going on with you too that you need to get rid of. Well, what it boils down to is, like like Clarence said, it's the lax church. Because you, you, you're understanding who this is being written to. It's saying, you know... That you are suffering that woman Jezebel. So the person that is being written to is actually allowing or suffering this Jezebel to do this thing. That's why Clarence said it's the lax church. So you could say you have the lax spirit. So would you be more comfortable saying it you have a lax spirit? This family, that family, we suffer from a lax spirit opposed to a Jezebel spirit? Well, I don't know if that would... Because I think he is, I think it's saying that you have a lax spirit because you're allowing uh, this to go on. Yeah, that is what it's saying. That was the problem that King Ahab had. Well, one of them, he had many, you know, but one of the things was he allowed Jezebel to do what she wanted to do, up and including murdering the prophets. Okay. All right. So, did we answer the question? Why? Why do we call it the Jezebel spirit? Yeah, because it's right there. There it is. This is this is um, big, a big deal. This these churches, these seven churches written in Revelations, is probably one of the most important things that the 144,000 can be understanding in these times. And so to have this name there is significant. But to think that this is all based on one little you know woman back there, no. Let me show you who this woman actually really is, and that's who's described over there in Revelation chapter 17. If you want to know who and what the Jezebel spirit is, you just have to read Revelation chapter 17. Okay. See again there in verse 2 that is talking about fornication and such. This is a very confusing word. Let's go back over to our verse of study. You see right here, it yet says the word fornication. This word is often taken out of context when people say that it is talking about sexual immorality or promiscuity. That's not what this is talking about. This is actually talking about um, idolatry. Here, Chris, let me see that. Oh, let me show you right quick. So we're here at the interlinear Bible and we're looking at Revelation chapter 2 and verse 20. And when we come down to find the word fornication, you see it right there listed as sexual immorality. Right. And when you hear people talk about this, they say that a 50 times sexual immorality as if they're trying to drive that into your head that that's what it is. Right. These same people, you know, I ain't gonna get judgmental here, but when we click on it though, D forty two o three, we see that the, one of the definitions is practice idolatry. So when you hear about Israel fornicating, he's not talking about the whole place of Israel, you know, is doing the sexual. He's talking about how they are actually committing idolatry. Yeah, they're, they're committing adultery with other gods, opposed to having a big orgy. Yeah, so this is, you know, like if and when you're married or you have a boyfriend, you're, you're, you're supposed to be in a monogamous relationship and then all of a sudden um, somebody pulls up in the driveway and there you go hopping and jumping in a car and drive off. That's fornication. Well, that's what we do, at least if, when we are um, entertaining this Jezebel spirit is that we um, are at least claiming to be um, children of, of our father. We're claiming to be um, disciples or we're claiming to be um, um, holy. But then as soon as Santa Claus pulled up in the driveway, 
we forget about Father and what he's talking about for a minute and we go partake with that particular God or those particular gods associated with Christmas. Okay. I understand. Like we'll say that we're good and following what the Father says for us to do, but the moment somebody offers us some gifts, now we're over there at the Christmas party. Here we are um, serving the Most High, the Creator, all year long, but then all of a sudden it's time to serve that God, which, you know, we do so with Easter bunnies and eggs. Now we have, we're setting aside our husband who is our father, our creator, we're setting aside him and we're actually over here now um, um, wearing the sundress at the Easter party. So are you saying that, and this might not be the um, correct time to ask this question, maybe later on throughout the lecture, but are you saying that the only way you, for you to obtain these, quote, Jezebel spirit is by doing um, secular holidays? Um, no, no. I'm saying that the problem with the Jezebel spirit is that she is teaching the kids or the family or the servants of God to do this. You know, if you want to be a bad person in, in general, that's kind of up to you and your personality and who you are, how you want to be. So if you want to have all these other particular traits of the so-called Jezebel spirit, that's fine and dandy. The problem with this Jezebel spirit is like it's saying there, she teaches and seduces his servants to commit fornication, that's one thing, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols, that's two things. So she may be doing a thousand, or this spirit may be causing this these people to do a thousand things, but you know, here's the problem, these two things right here. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is how this doesn't really affect just women. All right. Men have the spirit, uh, it actually is kind of like a family spirit. Your family has the Jezebel spirit. Not only the, there's three, actually, there's three or four stages of the Jezebel spirit. There's one stage where all of the family is enjoying the Jezebel spirit. Those, what do we say, they was up there uh, committing these fornications and eating food sacrifice on the idols, Christmas parties and whatnot. So the whole family is is in taking in these pagan festivals because that's what it boils down to. You're fornicating with these other gods and you're eating the food. That's the Christmas dinners and stuff. So you, this first stage is where everybody is enjoying that stage. The next stage is where somebody wants to put a halt to it. Now there's the arguments and the stuff as there's the, the transition or the disunity or disharmony in the family where somebody doesn't want to keep the, fest, keep the uh, pagan festivals anymore. Then there is the third stage when nobody in the family wants to do the, the, the pagan festivals anymore. So the Jezebel spirit actually affects the whole family. The children have the Jezebel spirit. The husband has, grandma has the Jezebel spirit. The maid has the Jezebel spirit. Even the dog has the Jezebel spirit in this household. It is a household Curse is a household thing. Okay. The only question is, is are you going to get rid of it? And, you know, which brings into question all of the fighting that goes along with trying to separate yourself from this spirit. So you um, have on the screen women and men have the Jezebel spirit. Yeah, forget my misspelling. And we're coming out of. Uh, First Kings 21 and 23, and I'm going to read that. It says, And of Jezebel also spoke the Lord, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Mm -hmm. And then First Kings 21 and 25 says, But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. So you had King Ahab. I'm sorry, did you have a point to me? King Ahab is this wicked king in himself. 
He already is doing the Feast of Jeroboam. You know what those are? Um, I know that Jeroboam went in and he changed some feasts around to suit his manipulation of the people. Yeah, actually built a idol, uh, a golden calf there in a whole nother city and had them to come in to worship this golden calf um, or whatever it was um, a month after the Feast of Tabernacles. So this is, and that, that's what he did in Israel. Those other ten tribes, those two tribes that, you know, are separate from who we know as Judah or the Jews. Those other ten tribes that we consider lost, one of the reasons that they were lost was because they quit keeping the Feast of the Lord altogether. At least for Tabernacles, they kept the um, eighth month uh, festival of the Jeroboam festival. And he also built an idol. And he did so he was he was a bad dude in himself then up on top of that he actually married this Jezebel lady now the only thing about her was that she was a, a, a Zidonian that's important because you'll find out that um, it was the same Zidonian women that led Solomon astray we're gonna see that here at the end um, and she was a princess. But, you know, we don't hear about any other, you know, uh, Zidonian princesses until we hear them married to our kings. Now they become a problem and now they now they have gotten the power. So Ahab, who was a bad guy in himself yeah. because of the things that he did as far as... Um, fornication with other gods and stuff yeah now he goes in and marry goes in and marry a woman who people that's what her people does yeah and so and she married a princess not just one of the you know little commoners he mm. goes in and marry um jezebel who was um princess of the zidonians and so there was nothing. Well, the woman usually have a great influence over the man. Yeah. So when it says she stirred up him to do this wickedness, yeah, I can understand it. So he was already wicked in himself, and so she. But he didn't went and found a whole nother next level of wickedness by bringing in this Zidonian princess. And you can imagine there probably was thousands of princesses. I mean, that's how they work. I mean, if you go to Saudi Arabia now, you can probably, I bet you can find a thousand women that could call themselves a princess over there. Her deal was is that she married the king of Israel. Right. And now she's allowed to use this power that she has, like you said, this influence over the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. Right. So back to the point. This spirit, this spirit of this, this Thyatiran spirit, this lax spirit, this Jezebel spirit affects, like we said, the whole family. It just affects the different people different ways. You have the woman who is being charged with teaching the, the uh, kids uh, or, the, or the servants, you know, to eat things, sacrifice and the idols and to commit fornication. But the man's role in this is that he is allowing this to go on. Amen. Ahab, that's the Ahab spirit, that's the spirit of Ahab, is that he is lax and he is allowing this to go on. So, we know that Ahab was uh, into idolatry probably before he even met Jezebel. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So, this is something that he wanted? This is something yeah. he just didn't mind? It yeah. was no big deal for him? Yeah, men enjoy the Jezebel spirit just like the, even just like the women do, They're, yeah. So is, yeah. today being the day after um, Thanksgiving, we got men down there shopping at Black Friday. Yeah, leading the playoff. way. They leading the way. We ain't carrying the pocketbooks no more. We are leading the way. We pushing other old ladies out the way so you know our wives can get in there and get what they want. We can get it for them. Our wives can stay home. I used to go to Black Friday by myself. Y'all didn't get up early enough for me. Yeah. So. No, people have watched other videos on the Jezebel spirit and seen like they're bashing women. No, that's that's a bad rap. It's it's only called the Jezebel spirit because her name is used in that way. 
but it is actually a family curse and the man is more responsible than the woman. Matter of fact, let me just jump to my next slide here. The problem did not start with the woman. It ends with her. See, I can agree with that because, you know, the woman takes a bad rap with everything. She takes a bad rap and it all goes back to Eve. Oh yeah, it goes back past so, Eve, but yeah, go ahead. She always takes the bad rap with everything and it's if the man is standing over there with his hands behind his back and he allows her to go, this is what it seems to me. It seems like he allows her to go ahead and allows her to take the bad rap, but nobody says, okay, remember that the father, he punished Adam also, and because Adam, he basically just, you know, I'm not, the, I'm not one to believe that Adam was sitting back there, he was uh, out taking a nap and she was over here doing this devil man by herself. I'm under the impression from scripture that Adam had some inkling or idea of what was going on. There's no evidence in the scripture that says that Adam was anywhere close. Well, I'm going to take a look and try to support it. Well, it ain't gonna be no big, big drama thing. No, let's take it in the comment section. Like we say, y'all, yeah. we fighting here. This is <laughs> for him to say, establish what we fight over, but you know, this is a area of debate within the homes of America, and we're hoping out of this, people can get an example of how to handle it. I'm gonna let you decide if it's a good example or a bad example, but you know, everybody's dealing with this spirit. And I believe that, you know, we're going to learn to conquer it through education. And part of this education will be, you know, how to how to talk about a crucial conversation. Right. You know. But we're gonna come back to Eve. What I wanna bring your attention to right now is the third testament of the Bible. And we're gonna look at uh, chapter 33 and verse 41. Okay. You know, only, like you said, women get a bad rap. And just to, you know, show that we're not here to bash women. I wanna bring out this particular passage here, these few verses here. If you would go ahead, Stacy, read, read uh, these two verses. The Third Testament chapter 33 and 41 says, Truly I tell you that the regeneration of humanity must begin with the woman, so that her fruit, which are the men of tomorrow, are found free of the stains that have led them to degeneration. So the regeneration begins with the woman. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. The degeneration began with the woman. I, I guess I need to change this again and say the problem started and ends with the woman. Right? Because we're always, you know, talking about the verse from Sirach which says what? Um, to a, a evil man, a evil woman is given. To an evil man is given an evil woman? Right. That's not the verse I'm talking about. I'm talking about the one that says that evil entered the world through the woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you brought that one to my yeah, attention. Right. Oh, well, I remember now. <laughs> All right. So, but it's saying here that the regeneration begins with the woman as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's talking about her fruit, which it says are the men of tomorrow. So you have these women who are all of a sudden going to start to raise these boys free of stains. In other words, they're going to teach them righteousness from from their youth. We don't have to wait till we're 40 years old to learn who God is. Right. Read verse 42. Then I will correspond to men to do their part in this work of reconstruction. For all who have corrupted a woman must regenerate her. So it's telling us, you know, that it, the men are going to have a, a, a part in this. Mm -hmm. Whereas before we you say like Adam, we were off doing our own thing, not paying attention to what Eve was doing when, you know, when the fall started. But now that it's time to put it back together, the men are going to have to make up for 
our inattentiveness before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not all on the woman, you know. The man, you know, he has a, a big role with, in it as well. If you would read verse 43. Today I have inspired you to save the woman who has stumbled on her path. And when you present her to me, whom you have saved, I will give her a flower, a blessing, and a very great peace so that she will not fall again. So it's talking about mainly, you know, our single women, our women that are struggling, the women that are having a hard time and all of this. Like you said, we're getting a bad rap. You know, women are getting a bad rap for this so-called Jezebel spirit or this lack spirit. But, you know, some of them are going to jump up and say they're doing the best that they can. You know, and the father, he is, you know, you know, wanting um, to help them. But he's going to have to rely on the men to actually reach out and try to save some of these these women to reach out to, to, the, to the women to the single moms and help them why do you just say single moms why do you say single moms because the ones who have a or are in a family structure the ones that are not single moms you know they got a husband you know they I ain't got to go to nobody's right. house who has a husband in place and say ma'am do you need some help that would be you know not that ain't gonna, you know that's not gonna work out well you know what I'm saying so I'm thinking that it's talking more particularly about, you know, widows or single moms or, you know, maybe even orphan girls or something like that. The women, he's talking about the women. The women need our help. You know, it's saying that the problem will be solved through them, but the men are going to be the ones to get in there and solve it, help them. They're going to have to solve the problem. Right. They're going to have to do the work. All right, if you would, read verse 44. If you fulfill this mission in this way, those beings wounded by the world will feel the love of Jesus enter their hearts. So he's, this is a mission he's talking about here, you know, to go out and actually try to reach these women. I did a video on this before, but I wanted to bring this one out here. Um, it, it may seem odd that we're talking about this doing a video on the Jezebel spirit, but, you know, I wanted to take this opportunity to, like he said, fulfill this mission that he's talking about where we're reaching out to these women. You know, may, I guess the main argument here is that, you know, it's not really their fault. You know, all of it, they're really victims in all of this because, you know, the man is really expected to be the leader and to actually guide her in the right way. And, and since we have failed the woman in that manner, we haven't guided her then, you know, the result of where she is today is, you know, it's our fault. It's the man's fault. So what you're saying is, yeah, okay. That child did bad. But you just can't keep saying uh, you did bad. You can't keep holding that over her. You being the parent or the covering or the head of her it's you as well who has fallen into this lack spirit the reason and you're not correcting her um you know ch trading that child out to be you know that that say for instance that wife she has um he did bad the woman did bad but you just can't default and keep going back to say oh you did bad and y'all the eve did this here the man has to take some responsibility in it too. He, 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 he was lax his, and he didn't he didn't go in and correct it. Well, his first thing that he has to do is get over this lax thing. He has to actually stop being lax. That that takes work. That takes effort. He has a role to play in it. And you know, yeah, what I'm saying is you you don't continue to um torment for lack of a better word this girl or this woman because of her errors and her flaws you actually have to react as men we have to actually help correct those primarily by showing a good example you know whereas before we were lax and we allowed them to have christmas parties and and easter parties now we demonstrate to them that we can actually have more fun at our father's feast and doing his festivals and stuff and we don't really need you know Easter bunnies to you know keep us giggling or whatever and then the other elements of the law as well 
he comes in and demonstrates to her how we are supposed to live and she being our daughters who have seen this example now grows up has her own children who she now raises within this example mm -hmm. you know, we praise father you know for allowing us to understand this in these end times because you know a lot of this you know kind of stuff was alien to alien we, we didn't hear about it right um there is one more verse that we want to bring out here this is again the third testament of the bible but we're looking at um verse 45 I shall listen when in their prayers they tell me, My father, do not see my sin, see only my pain. Do not judge my ingratitude, but see my suffering. In that instant, my comfort will descend on that troubled heart, and it will be purified by its tears. Oh, if you only knew how much more the prayer of the sinner is felt than that of the vain who believe themselves just and clean. See, this seems to be the daily prayer of the woman. Especially the one who is in trouble, you know. There's a reason for our trouble, you know. When nothing, there is no accidents. So, some woman out there struggling, this should be, you know. Of course, we pray daily for His will to be done. Basically, the Lord's prayer. Right. Well, you know, the woman should be also adding this to this, saying exactly what it says here. It's in quotes, my Father, do not see my sin, you know. Only see my pain, because. Pain, sin brings pain. And so even though she may have committed these acts and done these things, she is paying restitution. Also, you know, see my struggle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah see. And, and so I just wanted to bring this out. You know, we ain't woman bashing or nothing like that. But we are about to get rid of this Jezebel spirit. Whatever it takes. So let's go on. We talked about who she was. She was a Zidonian princess, right? That's who she was. She just did Zidonian stuff. And, you know, if she had a did it in Zidonia, she would be praised, you know, but she did it in Israel. And now it's, you know, a bad thing. Right. But now here, let's talk about a couple other points. One being how Jezebel worshipped Baal. Now, do you understand the significance of that? I don't know. Do, do kids, do y'all understand who Bell was and what, um, who he was, who this figure Bell is or was? No, I don't. Without all of the verses to back it up, I'll try to dig them up. But Bell was obviously an idol, a god, a God of the the older or the, he's still a god of the day, but this particular god, the thing about Baal is Baal's worship required the sacrifice of the firstborn males, maybe the females too, but the firstborn of every family to worship Baal. There, you would take the firstborn males down to Baal who was a fire god and basically throw your firstborn male into this fire as an offering to Baal. So it would be like taking the firstborn who the father say is his. Absolutely. Disregarding what the father saying and say, no, I'm going to take you and give you to my God whose name is Baal. His name is Baal. Now a lot of people, that's why a lot of people associate with abortion with this. And how it seems as though they are getting into these young girls who are having their firstborn child and they're convincing them to actually abort the child as well is basically killing the firstborns. And the giving one. it to Baal. Oh, is that what you're saying? That, yeah, he's giving it. Of course, Baal is not a real dude. It don't really right. matter. The, the thing about it, you're killing the firstborn. Like you said, they, they're supposed to be father's Levi's those who are charged with the building the, the taking down the construction the maintenance of the temple including the third temple to serve this dude Baal you actually have this firstborn destroyed you kill him yeah for eliminating all the firstborn absolutely this is this is what it's all about this is Baal worship getting rid of the servants of God, getting rid of the firstborn. And that's why you have this so-called Jezebel spirit out here 
chasing Elijah. Elijah is the firstborn of the firstborn. He is El Ayah. So that could somewhat explain why you see more, um, and I know it doesn't have much to do with um, skin color, but it does have something to do with skin color. It, that's why you might see more um, abortion centers and clinics in communities that are of African um, color. As if they're targeting these, right. this, this group, Judah, um, half tribe of Benjamin, who are now here in the United States. Yeah. Um, now, this seems this is what it's all about. There's, this is the Jezebel. That's part of the whole Jezebel spirit. The feminization of the man is kind of the, another part of that whole bigger picture. It's not only a curse that affects the family. This Jezebel spirit affects the world. This is going. This is a big deal. This is. It's all about getting away from the things of our father and getting us over to that kind of Zidonian princess kind of idolatrous kind of stuff. That's the Jezebel spirit. That's the and, and, and the thing about the Church of Thyatira is that the servant of father, the, the servant of God is allowing this to go on. He's allowing her to kill the prophets and you know we get confused thinking that okay this Jezebel girl, this Jezebel lady that lived so bad, you know, she's done so. She she's different because she was actually killing the prophets. Well, today we don't have to actually murder the prophets. All we got to do is silence them, make them to where they can't talk. You know, even if they have a ministry on a platform like a YouTube, all we got to do is make it so that you know nobody gets to see their videos, and we can shut them down. Or we can silence them all together. You know, it's all about. It, it, it ain't so much as about killing a person or killing the firstborn males as eliminating their message so that the truth doesn't get out. We can continue with this Zidonian princess kind of Babylonian kind of stuff. The next thing on the list is what are the traits of the Jezebel spirit? Okay. We're going to start with Revelation chapter 2. Uh, and verse 22, if you would read the first verse. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Now this is one of the ways you know that you have the Jezebel spirit within your house, is because of what it's talking about here. The woman is actually going to be in a state of depression. She's going to be on the bed in a state of depression, and the man is going to be in some type of tribulation, some type of turmoil. Okay. Like, you, like an example, a man is going through financial trouble trying to figure out how he's going to get the bills paid and the groceries bought all while he's downstairs, you know, you know, contemplating what he's going to do. The woman is upstairs just laid in the bed. She can't even muster enough energy to get out. Yeah, she is. Uh, depressed or else she you know depression can come in a lot of ways like she's silent she don't want to talk to you or you know is you have you have to understand that this Jezebel spirit has eliminated our father out of the picture altogether that's the purpose of the Jezebel spirit so now look at what you have left that she has gotten rid of the father so now she's sitting there. What what else is there besides depression when you have separated yourself from the Most High? Right. And the man is in some type of tribulation. I mean, they, I guess he'd love to be in a state of de depression where he could lay on the bed too, but no, nah, he's out there under some type of trouble. Some type of thing that's, that's getting him, whether it's physical or spiritual, warfare, or whatever's going on. He's in trouble. She's on the bed. That's one way you can know that you have the Jezebel spirit. But here's a trick. If you ever tell your, your people, if you ever tell your wife that this is one of the traits of the Jezebel spirit, in defense of the Jezebel spirit, what will she do? She, she ain't going to get on that bed no more. Right. Yeah, She's going to go do something else. <laughs> She's gonna go, you know, she's gonna go sit in the woods under the tree, you know what I'm saying? She ain't gonna demonstrate this anymore because, you know, it it, it is a trait when you see but if, but to the 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 novice, yeah. If your wife is laying on the bed, then a stay on the couch or stay whatever, she just laid down, 
in a state of depression and you getting your butt kicked from here or from there, yeah, you have the Jezebel spirit. You have the spirit of Thyatira in your house. Yeah. And I will kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am he that searches the reins and hearts and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Now, this is another way you're going to know when some of these women's children are going to die. They're, they're literally going to die. They're already doing it, you know, when you in any woman that can look and she has buried a child. Yeah. I'm sorry, but that it this may very well be the reason why you had to bury that child was because the spirit of Jezebel is rampant and is in your house. And, you know, with this tribulation coming up, that's why I hesitate to say it in past tense because, you know, there, there could have been some other stuff going on, you know. You know, there could have been people gaining merits by raising this handicapped child or something like that. And it wasn't about the Jezebel spirit. It could have been something else. But with this tribulation coming and all of the deaths that's supposed to happen here and there around the world, a lot of these deaths that these people are going to witness, that you know, losing their children will be called will be because of this Jezebel spirit that's taking over the world. Now, the next thing that I want to get into is Willie Lynch. What you know about Willie Lynch? We, we, we talked about Willie Lynch already, right? We've, well, I don't know if we talked about Willie Lynch uh, in this video, but we have in other videos. But Willie Lynch was a, um, I don't know if he was a slave owner or a slave trader, or, but he came in and he taught the... Um, slave owners how to control their slaves and he had certain methods that um, affected, affected um, our ancestors in ways that we are still seeing showing up today. Yeah, from the Willie Lynch letters we learned that they actually turned us into slaves with a process used to break horses and here in the next couple of slides I just brought out some of those um, things to talk about how um, they used and changed the African American race to make the point that while Ahab had to go over and find this type of woman from Zidonia which would have been a Gentile nation because of what happened with Willie Lynch and what these people read in these Willie Lynch letters this Zidonian this Jezebel spirit has now been trained and ingrained into the African American race and it has even spilled over into every other race and culture in the world in other words we have now the weaponized version of the Jezebel spirit, and it all came from a guy named Willie Lynch. Mm-hmm. I was, um, a lot of our sisters and, um, we'll say Israel sisters, black sisters, um, for lack of a better word, um, you know, our, we're, we're in a lot of trouble. We're in a lot of trouble. We're doing things we shouldn't do we're saying things we shouldn't say we're acting in ways that we shouldn't act and we we were presented if our ancestors were presented to take a look at us right now they would be embarrassed and ashamed of the way that the women of our culture now are acting and behaving and there's a reason for this and as an older, um, I would say, sister, I think that we have fallen into some of these um, curses and traits that were ingrained in us and that people can say, well, you're under Je Jezebel spirit that we need to, we need to clean up. And so by knowing this process, which we would encourage everybody to read, um, I think we can see a lot of the Jezebel traits um, within ourselves now. Well, so. like I'm saying, is it was no accident. The they actually went through a process. The this Willie Lynch, he was a expert 
or I should say he hired a team of experts, um, actually a uh, two-part team. One part that was an expert in, in um, uh, human psychology and how the brain works was one half of the team and the other half of the, train, the team was how to break horses. This team was expert in training horses and he put this together, these two things together, how to break a horse and he learned how, to, and he taught these people how to break a race of people. So we're not just in trouble. This was no accident. This is, you know, somebody's plan. And, you know, let, let's just take a look at it. If you would read this excerpt from the Willie Lynch letters. The breaking process of the African woman. Completely break the female horse until she becomes very gentle, whereas you or anybody can ride her in comfort. Bread the mare and the stud until you have the desired offspring. Then you can turn the stud to freedom until you need him again. Train the female horse whereby she will eat out of your hand. And she will in turn train the infant horse to eat out of your hand also. So this is what they did. They trained, they, the way it's talking about a horse here, they did this for the African slave back there and actually turned this woman into um, this, this slave. They turned our women into slaves because now she doesn't have a man that she can depend on for her security and they did so with precision and accuracy, knowing that this, what they've done to this race of people would last for 400 years, he said. Right. Yeah. Right. They, they, um, just showing you some stuff, how they did this. You can actually, uh, hit pause and, you know, or go over and check out the, uh, Willie Lynch letters. It is a little bit offensive and hard to read, but. So how does this Willie Lynch equal out and have us talking about him? in this video entitled Jezebel Spirit. Well, because now that you have broken the family structure, you have made it so that this woman, this African woman, has no faith in the fact that her husband can protect her or her son can protect her. She goes on and raises these backwards kids. She, she raises her sons to be mentally weak but physically strong so that when something goes down um if there's a if there's a protest in the streets or if there's a riot her son will be at home not really mentally prepared to get out there and act with those other uh, uh people that's going on he's going to be home and protected under her custody and protected under her all while the daughters are being raised to be mentally strong. So if somebody do come to the gate and say, where's the men folk at? It's actually going to be the daughters and the women that are going to go to the gate and say, no, you can't have them. All while the men are in a state of fear where they're actually going to be hiding for their lives. It boils down to role reversal. He, they essentially reverse the roles. Another thing I am thinking about also is how this um, equals with the Jezebel spirit is now that you have the woman who is, we're going to say, in charge of the family. Now, when opportunity comes for someone to uh, say, you should do this, you should do Christmas, you should do Easter, you should do Thanksgiving. The man who is has been shut down ha, is not able to hold up a defense. And so now the woman who is prone to want to do these things because, you know, women, we like to do this stuff. We like the jingle bells and we like the dressing up and the pretty pastel colors of Easter and all that kind of stuff. We have a, um, a love or a like for these things. He's laxed. You know, you go over there and sit down, we're going to do Easter, and now we're worshiping other gods. Yeah. So, and this was enforced, I'm, I'm trying to find the word where this was actually trained into this race of people, and like I said, it's spilling over into other cultures, so that where other women are now looking at this race of people and have the, how they have no respect for their husbands, and they are embracing this type of stuff well the holy jezebel spirit is being spread all over it's not this zidonia anymore it's spread everywhere
is is completely taking over the world. And so it's, it's like the Jezebel spirit and the Vashti all in one. That's the Vashti spirit is part of the Jezebel spirit. Vashti, Queen Vashti, was acting under the Jezebel spirit. That's why they shut her down. But when you had these isolated cases, Vashti, Jezebel, um, I can name you know some of these other people, uh, Miriam, uh, Eve. Y'all slow down and see some of these verses. Uh, Michael had the, was acting under the Jezebel spirit. Job's wife, Nimrod, even goes all the way back to Lilith. Um, women acting under this this um, this spirit is rampant and all throughout the world. But here in the year 2021, 2022, 2023, we are actually inundated with it where it's actually being trained into this race of people who are very popular and is now through um tv and and phones and stuff is being um um promoted throughout the world promoting this jezebel spirit throughout the world even all the way up to uh michelle obama yeah well i'm starting to see it now um you know, me and you have had a lot of contention about why you're saying, you know, and I wish you would have went over your list of things that you had. Why are you saying this is going on and that's going on? I'm like, well, that's not part of the Jezebel spirit. You know, you're just making up stuff. But when you boil down to it, you go through all the, you know, you got a bad attitude. You're saying this. What it all boils down to, to it is that you're being taught to worship other gods yeah that's what that's what the jezebel spirit is the woman like you said wants to do it anyway and the man is allowing her that is the jezebel spirit he's lax and she's a woman she wants to she wants these nicey things she wants that kind of stuff she's attracted to that kind of stuff and men then we get attracted to it too so we allow it to go on Okay, so let's go on. So these traits, we say, have been entrained into the race of people, into everybody, into, into the entire world now. These, these traits have been um, trained into humanity. But what traits are they? Well, for that, we're going to jump over to the Shepherd of Hermes in the book called Similitudes 9, in particular, uh, Similitudes 9, um, and we're going to hear about the powers and the virtues. Mm -hmm. Remember, the scripture says that we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. these powers, I'm saying, I'm proposing that these powers have been trained into people. Oh, I absolutely agree and absolutely know that they have. You know, I'm a witness that they have because I do uh, fight against many of them myself. Yeah, so, myself. so if we can get rid of these so-called uh, powers that, you know, if I guess what I should say is that the spiritual warfare then includes battles against these powers that we know we're fighting against. Mm -hmm. you know? So let's go over to the Shepherd of Hermes and let's see who these powers are. What I'm thinking here as we go through some of these is we can identify some of the traits of the Jezebel spirit in these particular powers, right? This is coming from uh, the Shepherd of Hermes, Similitudes 9. Um, if you would, Stacey, would you read verse 144? Okay. Here now, said he, the names of those women which are clothed with a black garment. The, now, what it's talking about here is, you know, this similitude or this parable um, that Hermes is seeing, there are 12 uh, virtues. We'll get to them in a second. Um, these are the good women that Hermes saw, but then you have 12 bad women that Hermes saw. And he's asking, who are these, you know, these bad looking women here? Mm -hmm. And another thing to include is that they're very seductive. Seductive looking women here. Probably would have been a better word than, than, than bad. Mm -hmm. These seducing spirits here. Right. The first is perfidiousness, the second incontinence, the third infidelity, the fourth pleasure, and the rest which follow are called thus sadness, malice, lust, anger, lying, foolishness, pride, and hatred. The servant of God which carries these spirits shall see indeed the kingdom of God, but he shall not enter into it. So can you see this? The Jezebel spirit in here, can you see the uh, uh, 
spirit of Thyatira in here? Yes, I yeah. can. I can. Um, you know, you, you become, like you said, that they're very seductive. And if you read the entire parable, you will see how it goes on to describe how seductive they look. And you would think, well, you know... I'm yeah. not I'm not doing these things or I don't like to be sad and I don't like to be malice and I don't like to have malice and I'm not lusting but we really are and yeah. you know and I can very well see how they can put them into my situation or everyday situation how they can be can fall under um, the spirit of Jezebel. Yeah, some that jump out she's prideful. The Jezebel spirit has is very prideful. Right. She's uh, lying. Mm -hmm. She, you know, doesn't have um, the spirit of truth, you know, all the time. Um, um, angry. There'd be a lot of arguing kind of stuff. And this this goal is not just a man, not just a woman, but it's the man, too. You got lust involved in these. Now, what I'm thinking is that, you know, the, the spiritual warfare starts here in removing some of these powers that, you know, are traits of this Jezebel spirit. Right. And then, of course, we have to replace them with the virtues. Right, right, because when the spirits leave, you want to be able to not have that hole there. You want to be able to replace them with the yeah. good ones. And, and, and we'll read over these, but in the Jezebel spirit, you may have the lack of some of these. Mm -hmm. right. Some of these traits may be missing. Mm -hmm. you know? So go ahead and read verse uh, 143. The first is called faith. The second, continence. The third, power. The fourth, patience. The rest which stand beneath these are simplicity, innocence, chastity, cheerfulness, truth, understanding, concord, charity. Whosoever therefore bear these names and the names of the Son of God shall enter into the kingdom of God. So you guys go in and look these words up because, you know, see what do you think as far as um, this Jezebel spirit and, and these particular traits is these the traits of the Jezebel spirit um, let's talk about that in the comment section but we want to go on and talk about what I'm thinking is the empowerment of this Jezebel spirit how, how are they being empowered what's giving them their strength All right. I got a few things listed here um, one thing is money very much so well you have to understand that the Jezebel spirit wants to separate us from the things of our father and when you think about it from the uh, principality perspective where you're thinking about governments and stuff and how this spirit you know affects them is you know uses money to actually replace our father mm -hmm. you know everything about him he and who he is here now in the 21st century we've actually come up with a way to replace him with money in almost every aspect. Yeah, and now we're having where the women are, you know, they in a lot of the households, they're making more of the having a bigger, I'll say they're having a bigger uh, financial footprint into mm -hmm. the household than the man is now. Well, that's not no accident. You right. have to you have to study your industrial revolution and how when these factories sprung up, the employers chose the women over the men for employment because the women were docile. Right. And because they were attached to their children and more loyal, more willing to do stuff according to what, what we saw back there in the Willie Lynch letters, willing to um, eat out of their hands. So let's bring it back to how is this with the Jezebel spirit. And I say it's once again going back to when the women, woman has power or she's making more money, now she can tell her husband what to do. He becomes lax. And she say, okay, we're doing Christmas, whether you like it or not. No. Or we're doing you whatever, you know, whether you I'm like it or food. not. Yeah. That's just, I mean, that's just real. That's what we do. So money is a way of, of, of empowering this spirit because she now has this way of taking care of herself. She don't really need to be under the authority of her husband or the authority of the Most High. She can get food. She can get, you got to remember that Jake, the promises of Jacob was food and clothing and health. Mm -hmm. Well, she can get insurance and, you know, a food stamp card and, you know, get some clothes and she good. Mm -hmm. You know, so that and then you have transportation. I, I hesitated to put that one on the list. But, you know, 
given her again this Jezebel spirit is about power and being able to do things without our father or the authority of the man she can actually do what she wants to do this you know being able to get up and leave and go anytime where she want to anytime she feel like it yeah and that once again brings me to a uh, story of you know I have a uh, someone that I know who um, said that his girlfriend I'll say um, has the vehicle and you ask if you need to go somewhere mm -hmm. you know making him lax once again and she has the power and the authority and so basically you do what I tell you to do anything that's given her power can be used against her if she doesn't have this mind to serve the Lord then it's this power that she's being given is actually going to leave lead her to like you say doing kind of carrying the family down the wrong path another thing I hear is telephones televisions and telephones yeah because the the narrative of whatever we're seeing you know we, we we would like to think I can go on YouTube and watch whatever I want to but more they're actually telling us what they want us to see they put up what they want us to see and we really don't have no control of it and a lot of it these days you know is centered around um, things that are not of the father yeah. things that you know just act absolutely and inundate us with bad stuff yeah I almost played this song in this video this is a s lyrics from um, a song um, by a uh, an artist, we'll give you the link down in the description of it. I don't want to promote any artists or anything like that. So if you're interested in where these labels came from, just look down in the description. But it's real interesting how it talks about these this plan of the devil to use the phones and the televisions to infiltrate the minds of men, causing corruption, causing actually what we see now and are talking about as the Jezebel spirit. The phones and the televisions were a main weapon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they tell us what they want us to see. The narrative, yeah, like it's like the lyrics say, they they teach us the narrative, even going as far as raising our children for us, our telephones and our televisions, or raising our kids for us, and it's pumping in a message to us that's actually driving humanity crazy. And this crazy, I believe, can be described as the spirit of Thyra Tower or the the lack spirit, allowing us to separate ourselves from our Creator. Right. Mm -hmm. And the last one, the most important one, I believe, is holidays. So, do you, once again, I'm going to ask you this question. Do you believe that holidays are the only way to, I don't know if you answered that question, the only way to serve other gods? Mm, only way to serve? No, there's other ways to serve other gods besides holidays. It's just that holidays, the significant thing about holidays is that you are all doing it together on the same day. Yeah, it's like a big old fest of serving Yeah, gods. so on this, take for instance Halloween, which is, they think is the evil one, right? Mm -hmm. So on this particular day, everybody going to do evil together. Okay. We, we're unified evilness, you know what I mean? And it's, so that's the significance of the holiday. No, you can worship in other ways. But it's like the, the most highest festivals. We are all praising around the world. We're all raising our hands in praise to our Father on the same day. That makes that's a big deal. Right. That, that has power. And as far as these uh, holidays are concerned, I believe they are empowering the Jezebel spirit. I believe because it is during this season that there's so much of it going on. We start off with Halloween, then we go to Thanksgiving. Then, you know, skipping over the, the, the Lord's festivals, because we didn't forgot about those tabernacles and atonement day. We don't remember anything about those. So we're steadily, we're starting off doing the Feast of Jeroboam, doing Thanksgiving, and then we're going on into uh, Christmas. So and every year it's just because we have holidays. I don't know how many we have, major holidays, but every year it's just... Everybody is just... It's a cycle. A cycle of worshiping other gods. That's where I believe the Vashti come in in that particular season. I believe that's why we were shown that in that particular season was because by the time you've gone through all of these pagan holidays, now you have this Jezebel spirit running rampant in your house. Yeah. 
You have now, every year, you have empowered this Jezebel spirit through the form of these holidays. And she's getting stronger and stronger, getting stronger, and stronger every, year. every year. So that's why it's, you know, I'm seeing this now. It's very important for us to, you know, try, if possible, like you said, that there are other ways. But if we could just try to not participate in these um, um, secular holidays, then we can start to not be a part of this giving um the spirit power you know over our household so i think see you have to you have to understand you know when we were talking about jezebel um i kind of showed you a verse we didn't really get into that verse um but that's revelation chapter 17. this is the true jezebel you know, I was kind of picking on you a little bit earlier, talking about that little Zidonian princess, little lady or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to know who the true Jezebel is, you have to come to Revelation chapter 17 and read about this great whore, this great harlot, this great woman who sits on, you know, seven, you know, mountains riding this beast mm -hmm. or whatever. She is the Jezebel. That's the Jezebel. Everybody else just got her spirit. Right. But you have to understand that it goes on to tell you how, like it says here in verse five, mystery Babylon. That's the Jezebel. That's where this comes from. That's where she comes from. The spirit of Jezebel comes from mystery Babylon. And what you find out, mystery Babylon was where these pagan holidays were created. Mm -hmm. So this is the source. You know, this is why I say this is the biggest thing because it's actually the source. This is what Babylon is. Babylon is all about these, um, uh, the worship of these pagan holidays. Mm -hmm. You know, though, and each one of these, you see these, these, these uh, names here. They, those are the gods. Don't pronounce any of them. We're not supposed to pronounce their names. But you can see that each one of these. Uh, names each one of these has a particular god. That's the god of Halloween right there. Right. You know, and then some of these you don't really know about. You know, you never really heard of them. But that's uh, Valentine's Day there. There's Easter right there. That's yeah, so a May Day or something like that. But you have these these pagan holidays, these eight pagan holidays that make up this Babylonian. Um, mystery babylon witchcraft kind of deal we we've christianized them and gave them christian names but this is actually what's going on here and this what this is what's empowering this um this harlot this yeah this is who she is this is this is it and it's it, like i said it's taken over the world even down to our own household we it's it's we're we're inundated by the um jezebel spirit all right, so now we're going to get into the potential cures for yes. Jezebel spirit. Right, like I said, what's the next level? We ain't playing. We ain't going to tell you about this demon. You going to tell you about the demon and not tell you how to get rid of it? Right. No, we got to have how to get rid of it. So we got a couple of ideas here. Now, again, this is coming from the Testament of Solomon. This is this book. You should you know read this book. Um, it does have a lot of uh, demon warfare in there. Things you know we hear about these demons that affect humanity and actually gives us uh, ways that we can thwart these demons. Um, so look for a link for for this book. I don't want to go into too much detail, take too much time with it. But as I was going over it, there was a couple that I think will actually help in the fight against this Jezebel spirit. All right. Um, we're down here in verse 104 looking at the 34th demon. This is, I can't remember how many of them there were. Mm -hmm. Were there 70 of them or more? I can't remember how many demons there were. But here's the 34th one. If you would read this one. I am called Autothife. I cause grudges and fighting. Therefore, I am frustrated by Alpha and Omega if written down. Now, this is the English translation. So that's why it says Alpha and Omega. Those are Greek letters that really have no power. What it's really referring to is the Aleph Tav, which right. are the Hebrew letters, right. which definitely have power. What it's saying is when these two letters are written down, they can cause uh, peace, cause fighting and grudges to stop. Right. So you can imagine if you have fighting and stuff going on in your, on your home, there's an argument going on. According to what this is saying here is that you can go write the letters Aleph Tav and fix all of that. 
And I believe you said that you've had personal experience with this. Yeah, I've seen it work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an engineer. I, I have a master's degree in science. I know how to run experiments, and I've actually experimented on this a left Tav, you know, even with people who, you know, I wasn't even involved in the discussion. I actually just went and wrote it down in their presence, so them for them to see it, and yeah, a left. Top and the, and the argument stop. That's why I use it as the symbol for our channel. Mm. Cut down on all of the, you know, keep down some of the fuss. This is what this is saying is that we could use these two letters as a symbol. So somebody understanding this could actually, you know, put this up as artwork in their house. I thought about framing these two letters and putting it in, you know, in in the house up as art. And another thing is when you're sitting to have the discussion, you know, with your family member or you know, somebody that you want to talk to this person about, you know, Jezebel spirit, the passions or anything, you could actually, you know, have that symbol there. Yeah. To So that maybe you can have a reasonable conversation where there Absolutely. won't be argument, but understanding. Absolutely. You know, so, you know, spiritual warfare, this is, this is a tool against this. Is a, I mean, imagine you shut down all the arguments. How long, how far would that go as far as conquering this Jezebel spirit when you could just stop the arguing, stop the grudges and the fighting? Right. All right. So here's one more. Um, if you would, go ahead and read this one. The 18th said, I am called Bull Mech. I separate wife from husband and bring about a grudge between them. If anyone write down the names of their sires, Solomon on paper, and place it in the antechamber of his house, I retreat thence. And the legend written shall be as follows. The God of Abram and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob commands thee retire from this house in peace. And I at once retire. So here you go. This, this right here is one of the major problems of the... Um, 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 the Thyatiran spirit can be conquered by uh, writing this down. You actually take this, and matter of fact, Chris, if you would, go in there to the room and take a picture of it on the wall. And so, well, I don't know. What do you guys think? You think this will actually be a uh, help fight against this demon, having this particular card to play? I think that the father uses things um, in what we would call weird or weird ways and I think that this book is very true and so I have no doubt that these writings have power and they can thwart you know evil out of your house or even out of a person yeah so actually doing this and I've actually tried it you know I put this in my house and actually I've seen changes uh, transpire based on it. Yeah, it's demon warfare. We're fighting against demons here. Um, like I said, we're fighting against, we, we're fighting against uh, principalities and powers, so we might as well know how to actually stand up against them and fight them. And I believe this book of Solomon will, this testament of Solomon will go a long way um, as far as doing that. It, it covers ailments in here and all kinds of things that we'll find out are actually uh, demon possessions. You know, from murders to fightings to strife to sicknesses, sicknesses and illnesses and all kinds of things. And you know, like we said, he 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 even goes as far as to tell us what we can do about some of those. So, all right, now there's actually one more passage from the Testament of Solomon that I wanted to talk about in this part of the video on demon warfare. That's coming out of verse 38. All right. Now we're actually going to end up doing an entire video on this one. This is a big deal, um, but I wanted to include it in this particular video um, just because of the information it holds. Like I said, we'll do a whole video on this verse because I think this one is a big one amongst all peoples and races and languages, but we're not going to spend too much time on it here. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. You could probably study it for yourself. All right. All right. Go ahead and read verse 38. Verse 38, likewise also the fourth said, I cause men to forget their sobriety and moderation. 
I part them and split them into parties. For strife follows me hand in hand. I rend the husband from the sharer of his bed, and children from parents, and brothers from sisters. But why tell so much to my despite? I have an angel that frustrates me, the great Bethiel. Yeah, he tells so much because it's necessary that we conquer this particular demon. So he's under the orders of Solomon and the powers given to him by our creator. He's forced to tell all of his secrets and tell how to get rid of this particular demon. Right. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things we see here are uh, affecting sobriety and moderation. Okay. And a lot of times when you see sobriety, I think it's talking about humility, but I think it's not really talking about humility in this case. But notice how it says that, first of all, he says that strife always follows. Mm -hmm. And so strife, we learned earlier, is a bigger demon in itself. So strife is not the demon. Strife is the demon that's following this particular demon. But then notice that he says that he breaks up the household, right. mm -hmm. separates the family, makes it so that uh, members of the family want to no longer be a member of the family. Right. Mm -hmm. But and then, but the main part of this that we understand is where it says down here, I have an angel that frustrates me. It is the great Balthiel. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I looks up this Balthiel and turns out it is the angel of forgiveness. The angel of forgiveness, okay? So you put that together with right. what we're reading here in Solomon. We have to call on this angel of forgiveness, this Beothiel, who is the angel of forgiveness, to thwart this other angel that we're talking about here that brings along strife. Mm -hmm. So what this is saying is that we have to be forgiven. Yeah, you know, that's sort of... Um... Or we have to forgive others. Yeah, it's sort of like when you put that together, like when someone has strife, against you or you have strife against another um just simply taking the time to say you know i forgive you for this or you know you don't even have to say that but to think that within your heart and it seems like that usually um uh, gets rid of this the strife that you have within you yeah and i think it's related to this sobriety and this moderation too i believe this is somehow causing um, this lack of forgiveness or somehow or the lack of forgiveness is causing them to forget their sobriety that they're going hand in hand But you know when like I said, we're going to cover this in another class We'll have more information to share But I just wanted to bring out the importance of forgiveness here because the way it looks to me and I've experimented with this one too is no matter what's all going on around you if we can have this angel of Bathiel or the spirit of forgiveness about us, we can go a long way as far as holding our households intact, giving us time to get rid of this angel of or this spirit of Thyatira altogether. Right. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is going to be necessary, especially when you consider all of the things that the spirit of Thyatira has caused, all of the problems that it has caused. It's not going to be, you're not going to be able to get through that without forgiveness. Right. Remember mm -hmm. the opposite of forgiveness is remembering injuries. Right. And mm -hmm. that of course causes death. So, you know, we're gonna chalk this up in our spiritual warfare. We're actually gonna use forgiveness as a weapon to right. get rid of this spirit of Thyatira, yes. this Jezebel spirit. Right. We'll offer that up as a uh, um, potential way of helping with some of that, some of this. Right. Mm -hmm. But the last thing we want to look at, which we promised, was to see what caused Solomon to fail. Remember yeah, that? I think everybody wants to know what actually happened to Solomon. He was put on um, this pedestal, just you know, to say that nicely, that he was not only the wisest man that you know walked the earth, but he was rich, handsome, and he had everything going for him. What happened to him? What happened to Solomon? So this is going to be uh, the second to the last verse in the Testament of Solomon. Um, we've got the kids in the room, but I think they can handle it. If you would, go ahead and read uh, verse 29, verse 129. And when I answered that I would on no account worship strange gods, they told the maiden not to sleep with me until I could complied and sacrificed to the gods so here you have solomon who had these who before had these thousand women right 
yeah. like 600 wives and 400 concubines, now has this one particular one that he is interested in. And who is they? They told the maiden not to sleep. With well, them. you have to you have to go back to the story of the Testament of Solomon and see how they used this woman to, it was the Zidonians used this woman who Solomon was intrigued by and basically had her to set, her, set him All up. Right, this was okay. a mm -hmm. Delilah kind of uh, yeah. thing here. Mm -hmm. um, this woman was used to yeah. crush Solomon. Because he actually mm -hmm. fell in love with her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. They told the maiden not to sleep with me until I complied and sacrificed to the gods. I then was moved, but crafty Eros bought and laid by her for me five grasshoppers, saying, Take these grasshoppers and crush them together in the name of the god Moloch, and then will I sleep with you. So he made a sacrifice to this god of Baal. That's the... One of the different names for Baal. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he made a sac he sacrificed three grasshoppers to this God. Right. For the sake of this woman. Right. This is the Jezebel spirit. This is what she's all about is separating her, her family, everything from anything holy. So he, they used her to come in here with three grasshoppers. Kind of like what Delilah did. It's just. Yeah. And I guess with him doing three grasshoppers, he thought, oh, this is a small thing. It's just three little crickets. Yeah. But yeah. yet, a sacrifice is a sacrifice. Made a sacrifice. And this I actually did. And at once the Spirit of God departed from me. And I became weak as well as foolish in my words. And after that, I was obliged by her to build a temple of idols to Baal and to Rafa, and to Moloch, and to the other idols. So there it goes, you know. The Solomon was crushed by the Bastas, the uh, spirit of Jezebel. Yeah, so he, basi King Solomon. he basically was put in the same position as um, Samson yeah. was put in. And you know, this is why we have to do this. We ain't really prepared for this level of spirit this ain't a regular spirit the, the the jezebel spirit ain't like the spirit of anger who really only makes you angry you know the spirit of fear only makes you scared this jezebel spirit takes down kings crafty yeah, and, yeah. so i believe that's all i got anybody got anything they want to add before we close out well i you know have seen it in a different light um like i said me and you had sort of a little bit of contention as to what the Jezebel spirit was but when it all boils down to it her purpose is or the purpose of this spirit is to make one worship idols which you know our father tells us in his first commandment throughout Hermes throughout the um, New Testament and the old that we are to have no other gods and he's serious about that you yeah. know, that is what brought Israel down, whether we can say they did all this, they were disobedient, they did this. Their major thing that brought them down was they started worshiping other gods. Yeah. And he's serious about this, and that is her, her, I guess, goal, yeah. is to cause, um, yeah, I think you said 144,000, or... To call us to worship other gods. Well, the, particularly the firstborn males. Not so much the 144,000, but the firstborn males. It's, it's that Baal worship is a target against them. So, you know, her, her main mission um, is that she's been given, you know, she and she's acting through the man and the woman and even the children. But what she's been given is to destroy him, to shut him down. Because our father's plan in the end times is to start with, the, the Levites start with the firstborn males. You read that in Malachi chapter 3 and 3. And so knowing this, Satan knows the scriptures. They say knowing this, he is now targeting these firstborn males, you know, trying to get rid of them through abortion. Or if they somehow learn to survive this, he has um, the Jezebel spirit already set up in every household through the mamas and the grandmamas, the daddies and the granddaddies, teaching these kids, these firstborn males to be idolatrous and eating food sacrificed unto idols and all that all of their life, knowing that this will basically kill them. They we don't have to murder them, you know, we can actually just shut them down and we can still get work out of them. We can still 
using them to do stuff. All right. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, give us what you think down in the comment section. If you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Mm -hmm. Subscribe anyway. Mm -hmm. We might say something funny next time. <laughs> Christian has said um, I wanted to say the Jezebel spirit can crush kings, so do not tolerate or submit to it, or it will crush you. And with that, we will see you guys in the next video. Shalom. 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 Bye.